morning. A warm welcome to those who are here in person and to those who are joining us online on Facebook. There is a bulletin on St. James' website that you can access at home at stjamesscan.org, and those here in person can actually access it also from any handheld device through St. James' Wi-Fi. I invite you now to stand and let us raise our voices in song with the opening hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
Today's reading comes from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, excuse me. No one can hide themselves or their deeds from God. This cuts both ways. Those hidden good works are laid bare before the Lord, as is the evil done in secret. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. And I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Let's together say Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble and my eye has seen the ruin of my foes. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. 
Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want them, he did not want anyone to know it. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another, uh, who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. May my words be of you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I love that we just sang that hymn. I, I know the tune. I don't remember ever singing that text. And I, we've just um, blessed parents and families and households, and I'm thinking about all the children that we have down in our Sunday school room today, and it's just wonderful to think of that blessing being upon these families. Jesus and his disciples were on the move. They were traveling on foot through the countryside. By now, in Mark's gospel, Jesus is headed for Jerusalem and the cross. He's singularly focused, preparing his disciples with what they need to know, but they don't understand, and they are afraid to ask. And they get sidetracked, arguing about who is the greatest. So like any good teacher, Jesus uh, goes at it from another angle, and he says, whoever wants to be first must be last and servant of all. But then it almost seems to me like he changes the subject. It's it's as if he got distracted by a child who is uh, on the edge of the group. And he starts talking about that and says that welcoming a child is welcoming God. And I have to be honest and just say that it's not crystal clear to me if or how these two teachings are connected. First, Jesus says, if you want to be great, be a servant. And then he says, welcome a child and you welcome God. So I want to begin with Jesus teaching about children. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Jesus could be saying that it matters immensely how we treat those who are most often overlooked. Typically, that's how this text is heard. Mahatma Gandhi once said, the true measure of any society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members, end of quote. Perhaps that's part of what Jesus was saying. But this week, as I listened to this text, I heard something that I had not heard before. I heard something about being welcoming, which is another name for hospitality. If you think back, can you remember what it was like before the pandemic to invite people over for dinner, to have guests in your home overnight for the holidays, to share time there with your family and friends. Sharing our homes and our tables is certainly one kind of hospitality, but I think Jesus is talking about a different kind of welcome, 
a broader form of hospitality. I think Jesus is talking about welcoming another human being into our consciousness. And that someone is another human being who is not like me. Jesus was telling adults to welcome children, people they would normally overlook. So who would that be for us? Maybe it's someone who thinks differently than I do, who has a different lifestyle or different values or a different background. This month, my daily devotional has been focused on this particular kind of hospitality, which may be why it came to mind when I read this text. Hospitality that is openness to someone who appears to us as a stranger. This is a quote from Daniel Homan and Lonnie Collins Pratt. Hospitality is an adventure that takes you where you never dreamed of going. When I let a stranger into my heart, I let a new possibility approach me. When I reach past my own ideas, I begin to stretch myself open to the world. End of quote. Imagine, if you will, this is a very unscientific um, anal- or image I'm giving you. It has nothing, doesn't come out of psychology or anything. But just imagine, if you will, that each of us has a space around us. This is, this is my world. It's filled with the things I know, my values, my point of view, my way of understanding the world. And somewhere at the edge of that space, there's a door that leads to everything else. Supposing I open that door and someone steps through it who is different from me. They have a different religion or no religion at all. They come from a different part of the country or another country altogether. Their clothing is not what I would choose. Or maybe it's worn out and dirty. They don't think like I do about things like global warming or politics or social justice. They're navigating COVID differently than I am. Now imagine that that person steps through the doorway and is standing in your space. How does that feel? These days when we disagree with people, it has become acceptable to keep that imaginary door shut. When someone in any way feels threatening to me or my way of thinking or the choices that I've made, it's okay to shut them out. But supposing that rather than keeping that door tightly shut, I open it as an act of hospitality and invite that other person into my space. Not only into my space, but into my consciousness. And for a while, pay attention to them, really See them as the human being that they are and listen to them. Just listen. Not so I can argue. Not so I can try to change their mind. But just to be curious about what they have to say, how they came to think the way they do, What led to their perspective? What life experience shaped them? What books or education or people have been influential? I don't have to like what they say. I don't have to agree with it. All I'm doing is listening. 
Being open and curious about another human being is a kind of hospitality that is very basic and yet so profound. Hospitality, this kind of hospitality, is allowing myself to really see a stranger. It's opening space for someone who has the same humanity that I do. A child of God, who is, therefore, a person of ultimate worth. To be open and curious about them is to recognize them as a human being. Barbara Brown Taylor talks about loving our neighbor in this way. She says, quote, The wisdom of the desert fathers includes the wisdom that the hardest spiritual work in the world is to love the neighbor as the self. And now listen to what she says about loving our neighbor as our self. It is to encounter another human being, not as someone you can use, change, fix, help, save, enroll, convince, or control, but simply as someone who can spring you from the prison of yourself, if you allow it. End of quote. Hospitality this kind of hospitality is letting go of myself enough to listen without judgment, without forming a response, without preparing an argument. Hospitality, this kind of hospitality, is letting someone in. Poet and author Mark Nepo describes this kind of hospitality as, I think, as listening. To listen in this way is to continually give up all expectation and to give our attention completely and freshly to what is before us, not really knowing what we will hear or what it will mean, end of quote. So ultimately, hospitality is about setting down what I think, what I believe, what I care about, my opinions, my agendas, long enough to be open to someone else. Now, full disclosure, there was actually more to that Mark Nepo quote. He concludes by saying this, in the practice of our days, to listen is to lean in softly with a willingness to be changed by what we hear. End of quote. And that is the kicker. When we welcome another, when we truly open ourselves to another, it might just lead to being changed ourselves. So think back with me to today's gospel reading. Jesus told his disciples that he would be betrayed and killed, and after three days he would rise again. They did not understand. And Mark tells us they were afraid to ask. Fear. There it is. Fear kept them from opening the door, from entertaining this strange and unfamiliar idea. And isn't that always what gets us? Fear of what might happen if I welcome someone who is different, ideas that are different, a perspective that is different. It might change my world. And I don't want to change. I want the other person to change. Jesus told the disciples he was going to die. They didn't want to hear that. He told them he would be raised after three days. They didn't understand that. But Jesus was describing the most important thing that he came to do the most important gift that God had ever given. 
What Jesus was talking about was the kingdom of God. So imagine again that personal space that I described around you, your world. Imagine opening the door, leaning gently in, listening attentively, attentively, observing. What we welcome when we do that is the kingdom of God, a place where there is peace, even in the midst of turmoil, because it's God's peace, a place where there is guidance when we are lost, a place where there is comfort when we are grieving, healing when we are broken or hurting, wisdom when we're confused, nourishment when we're empty, strength when we are weak, renewal, forgiveness, justice, joy. This is God's kingdom. Jesus said, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. To be a person of hospitality is to welcome the kingdom of God. Again, a quote from Daniel Homan and Lonnie Collins Pratt. Hospitality is not something you do as much as it is someone you become. End of quote. Hospitality is living life in such a way that we hold space open for the very presence and power of God. But be careful, because to welcome God is to hold space open in which we are likely to be changed. God meets us where we are, but by God's grace, never leaves us there. That's who God is. That's what God does. God changes things. God changes us. Amen. Getting ready for the service standing in the sacristy, we watched a a number of small children going downstairs to Miss Laura's class, and we're so glad to welcome them. Welcome them because we're human, because we're Christian. And would it be the same way if a much older man recently released from Auburn prison after serving his time were to come in here because we are Christian, because we are human? Or if someone we radically disagreed with, someone I had disagreed with, or even someone I hated, were coming to my space. Because we are Christian, would we accept that? Let us recite once again one of the creeds which we have because we are Christian. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
Let us pray for the church and the world. In the Diocese of Central New York, we pray for our Bishop, the Right Reverend Dr. Dee Dee Duncan Proby, and the people of St. James Episcopal Church in Pulaski and their priest, the Reverend Shelley Banner. We also pray for the people of Zion Episcopal Church in Rome and their priest, the Reverend Jim Height. In our companion diocese of El Salvador, we pray for the people of San Mateo in Lourdes and their priest, the Reverend Irma Alvarado. In the Episcopal Church, we pray for our presiding bishop, the most Reverend Michael Curry, and the people and the people of the Diocese of New Hampshire and their bishop, the Right Reverend A. Robert Hirschfeld. And in the Anglican Communion, we pray for the people of the Church of the Province of Uganda and their Archbishop, the Most Reverend Stephen Kazimba. Equip us with compassion and love to carry out your work of reconciliation in the world. God of love. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders, that they would serve the common good, unite the human family in bonds of love. God of freedom, God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care. Stir in up, up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources, that we may leave to our children's children the legacy of abundance that you have given us. God of justice, <laughs> God of peace, we pray for this community for our schools, neighborhoods, and workplaces. Give us courage to strive for justice and equality among all people, beginning here at home. God of peace. God of mercy. We pray for all in any kind of need, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, for the lonely and those who mourn, and for those we name now, either silently or aloud. Awaken in us compassion as we seek and serve Christ in all persons, God of mercy. God of grace. We pray for those who have died, for those lost to the pandemic, for military personnel and public servants who have given their lives in service to our nation, and for those we now name now, either silently or aloud. God of grace, Hear our prayers, holy God. Breathe your spirit over us and all the earth. The barriers would crumble and divisions cease. Make us more fully your co-healers of the broken world. Unite us with all people in bonds of love, that the whole earth and all its peoples may be at peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So with you. Please be seated.
we have uh, had a, at least a month of deep cleaning going on here at St. James. People in and out of the building doing all kinds of things and we want to uh, give those uh, folks a special thank you. So if you have been one of those people, I would like to invite you to stand and let us... Uh, yeah. Having a building op or stand empty and unused for a year uh, does a lot of damage, and so we, we had a lot of work to do. So thank you to everybody who helped with that. I want to commend to you uh, the Tuesday morning offering that's called Dive Deeper. It is a look at the scripture for the coming week that takes place on Zoom in a discussion format, and it is rich and incredibly helpful in getting ready to hear and read again the texts for Sunday morning, which are often difficult to understand at, at first. And so if you have time to do that, Chuck leads that and he can give you the Zoom link or you can get it through the church office. Uh, Kip has an announcement for us about uh, creation care. Good morning. Uh, in this month's spirit, you'll see on the second page a new adult education, Caring for God, Creation, What, Why, and How. And it's a three-week series on Tuesday nights from 6.30 to 8 on Zoom. You don't have to go anywhere. Just turn your phone on. Um, the connection to get that Zoom link is at the bottom of this little ad right here at the bottom. Um, and Laura has been sending out e emails about it as well. This is an opportunity for us to learn more about how we can care more for creation. The first session is September 28th at 6.30, and that will be the what, the what which is the theology of creation, um, and that will be a talk by our bishop. Um, I hope you all will consider uh, partnering with us and signing up for the Zoom link. Um, it will be recorded as well, so you can hear it at later times as well. Thanks, Kip. We are not passing the plate these days, so if you brought your offering and would like to leave it, it there's a little black box at the back on the right-hand side on your way out. And now that we have three services every Sunday morning, again, we are in need of ushers and readers, and uh, if that's something that you think you might like to do, we'd love to have you speak to uh, Laura Pesesnik or call the church office and just let us know. We will train you. It's not hard. And it's actually, um, it's actually really meaningful ministry to be able to do those things. Next Sunday, we are delighted to welcome again as our guest preacher, Kathy Corley. She is a phenomenal preacher, and I'm just delighted that she's going to be here with us. And I get to be here. She was, the last time she was here, I was on vacation. When it is time to come to communion, we ask that you uh, take a little visit to the hand sanitizer station that's right there in the middle before you come forward and uh, receive the wafer and then take it back to your seat with you, uh, when you where you can remove your mask. We do have some birthdays and anniversaries. This past week was uh, birthdays were Lisa Ebert, Amy Allen, and Matt Bates. And this coming week, Nathan Latre and Lily Winkleman and Rick and Barb Burton celebrated a uh, wedding anniversary. Is there anyone else who's here? Is it your birthday? No, it was my son's birthday yesterday. Four. four. That's almost a whole hand. <laughs> I know. That's a, that's a, and what's his name, Nick? Andrew. Andrew. All right. So we're going to also pray for Andrew. If you would say the anniversary and birthday blessing with me. May the strength of God pilot you. May the power of God preserve you. May the wisdom of God instruct you. May the hand of God protect you. May the way of God direct you. May the shield of God guard you against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. And may the spirit of God bless you in the coming year.
standing as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. This is the table of Jesus. It is prepared for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. It is not I who invites you, but Christ the Lord, and it is his longing that you meet him here this day. 
The congregation may be seated. Standing as you are able, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. 
Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the heavens bless you. May the sun shine on you. May the rain dance on your upturned face. May the stars make you wonder and smile. May the bounty and beauty of the earth bless you, and may you bless the earth in planting and protest and sharing food. And may God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer bless you now and forever. Amen. creative. Go and work for justice. Go and love your neighbors. Go and walk with God. Amen. Alleluia.